live from J. Dave and Ramsey Stadium on the campus of Bear River High School. Touchdown Productions, celebrating 21 years of local high school sports excellence, is proud to present the CIF Sac Joaquin section, Les Schwab Tires, Division 5 play football playoffs. Tonight, in the semifinals of the, the D5, your number six seed, Bear River Bruins, take on the number seven seed, Rippin' Indians. The Bruins are one game away from a return to the Division 5 Finals, and we have all the playoff action right here, right now. It's your NorCal Game of the Week. Whoa! <laughs> the Bear River Bruins return home for an unscheduled playoff contest on the road to the section title. Their, their opponent tonight is their familiar playoff rival, the Rippin' Indians. Good evening, Bruin fans. This is Marty Mortensen, the voice of Bear River football. Joining me tonight, making his own playoff appearance, is veteran broadcaster and Bear River alumnus, Steve Sitter. Our ex executive producer is Gilbert M. Dominguez, and our camera operator is Michael West. Steve, what can you say about this, uh, this playoff situation here tonight? Well, Marty, it's great to come back to the polar vortex for such an important game for the Bruins. Both these teams trying to advance to the finals. And as the number six and number seven teams, they were both on the road in the first week, but both managed huge upsets in week one. All right, for the Bruins, it was a trouncing uh, over last year's D5 champion, a number three seed, the capital uh, Christian Cougars, by a score of 26 to 7. Yeah, and for the Indians, it was a big win over number two seed Calaveras. Final score of that one was 28 to 13. So the Bruins receive the home game tonight because of their higher seed. However, they come home to a very wet and soggy field here tonight. Yeah, Nevada County received over five inches of rain in the last 48 hours. So even though the skies are clear, the field will be soggy and sloppy, not to mention slippery thanks to 80% humidity. So this will definitely become a mud bowl with the winner advancing to the championship game on Saturday the 25th. Well, it's time for us to uh, step aside for 30 seconds, and when we return, we'll go out to Placer High School for the RU Outside pregame show, where Paul Brown and Pat Austin are covering the Placer semifinal game against Woodland. They will update the playoff picture and take a look at the playoff grid, since we have three PVL teams in the semifinals tonight. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at TouchdownProductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by B&C True Value Home and Garden Center in the Fowler Center in Grass Valley. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Well, welcome back to J. David Ramsey Stadium, campus of Bear River High School. Marty Mortensen, Steve Sitter, and Michael West all are here for this uh, very cool evening and uh, for this Bear River Bruin football game tonight. So let's throw it over to Paul Brown and Pat Austin for the RU Outside pregame show. Guys, what do you have for us? Welcome back to Lefevre Stadium. Just about ready to light it up here. Blaster Hellman against the Woodland Wolves. And we also uh, want to welcome you Bear River fans. Give me a shout out to Steve Sitter and Marty Mortensen who are at Bear River tonight. So let's take a look at the Division Four football playoff bracket here. As you've seen in the last two weeks with touchdownproductions.com, Placer Hillman defeated Natomas 53 to six in the first round. And this being our second round game, you see how Woodland got here defeating El Dorado 56-17, very similar routing of their first round opponents. We had Center, who defeated Dixon in a closer game, 34-14. Center moved on, Casa Roble. They uh, defeated Union Mine, 43-13, so they will be playing tonight. They're playing at Bella Vista High School. Winner of that game will go on to the finals, and we'll see uh, if the Placer Hillman can advance to that finals game. So with that said, let's take a look at Division 5, Pat Austin. Division 5, we have two more local teams uh, going at it in these brackets. Sonora and Colfax will be playing tonight. Sonora took out Highlands 70 to 48 last week, and Colfax won 43 to 20 against Oristimba. 
In the next game, Bear River takes on Ripon. Bear River won 26 to seven against Capital Christian and Ripon beat Calaveras 28 to 13. So all the football action there is lined out for you tonight. As you see on the field now, the white jerseys of the Woodland Wolves soon to become brown and dank jerseys once this uh, mud bowl gets started. But with that said, let's throw it back over to Marty Mortensen, Steve Sinner, who are at Bear River. Thanks, Paul and Pat, for the playoff update. And we'll be getting the score of that game all evening as they cover the number one Hillman in their own finals matchup. And as you saw, the Colfax Falcons are also in the semifinals tonight. So there's the possibility of another Colfax and Bear River championship game. But tonight here at Bear River, the Bruins will have their hands full trying to take care of business against the tough, ripping Indians team. We're moments away from the kickoff, so stay tuned. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River football right here on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is underwritten tonight by SPD Markets. The Painter family reminds you to be local and shop local. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 21 years of local sports television. Well, the Bruins break out their huddle, and uh, welcome back to J. David Ramsey Stadium. Marty Mortens and Steve Sinner and uh, Michael West. We're ready for the kickoff for the second round playoff semi semifinals. The winner of this game goes on to the championship next Saturday. So, Steve, I think we're going to be in for a really good game here tonight. Yeah, these are two very similar teams in terms of play style. Bear River tends to favor the pass a little bit more. Ripon uh, definitely grinds it out on the ground, and it'll be very interesting to see how the field conditions play into each of those strategies. So, back to receive uh, is Calder Cundy. The kickoff for the Bruins. You have to watch him, Steve. I know you haven't seen this Bear River team yet this year, but uh, he's got good speed and uh, excellent uh, mobility out there. A lot of good moves. It's always a little bit comforting to have your star wide receiver taking the kickoff. The kickoff the Bruins will be receiving the kickoff to start the football game. And Rippon won the toss and elected to kick. Normally, Bear River, when they, this, I think this is their only their second kickoff to receive the start of game. They always wait till halftime. So here we go. <coughs> it's going to be taken up short by Moronic. And he's going to be at 37 yard line. And Bear River will take over first and uh, 10. So let's see what the, what the Bur Bruins have for their uh, first series of plays tonight. Last week they went three and out, Steve, on their first series. So we'll have to see what happens here. And note on that kickoff, it was a side spinning kick, not what you're looking for uh, if you're the place kicker. I have a feeling that was due to the slippery conditions. All right, here's a handoff to Bays, cutting it up to the outside, going nowhere. Brought down in there by number 42 for the. That is uh, Golovsky. Kick. Well, first run barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. So Bays comes out, and Scott co uh, comes in. So let's go in shotgun formation, pa passing play, and there's. There's Cal Calder on the move. He picks up about five yards. Good patience. He waited for the play to happen in front of him. Got a very small hole that he had to duck through. That's a pretty good gain on second and long. And I'll set up third down and uh, about maybe close to five. Well, the Ripon Indians are calling for defense from their fans. and. Let's see if uh, in shotgun formation is bagging again. In motion is Moronic. Now he's going to rush. It. He's going to run it. Oh, going to get a first down. Bagging bag on the run. Forty-seven yard line, maybe the forty-eight. Near first down yardage. Yeah, that'll move it. That was Roland Davis on the tackle. Yeah, Baggett's kind of a triple threat. He can pass. He can run. And he also does a lot of faking in there, so 
and he ran directly into an outside mm -hmm. linebacker and broke even with him. That yep. is impressive. So first and ten for the Bruins on their opening series. And there's a handoff to Zimmer around the right side, trying to turn the corner. He does, gets a couple of blocks, and he's going to be brought down by number 23 again. That was Winters and Davis. Gain of about five. And that's that grinding offensive style. I was talking so about in the pregame. It's not about playoffs, making the big so plays, it's about making the consistent nice medium plays. Guarantee something they simply won't sell it. So whether you're coming in for tires, brakes, or alignment, you'll know nope. the peace of mind comes they standard with break out of the huddle. Tires. Doing the right thing matters. Nobody in the backfield now in motion. And that is Moronic trying to go over the uh, left side. And picks up a guard. Maybe picked up a, a yard, maybe. Camino on the tackle for the... <laughs> so it's uh, third down. Now timeout's going to be called here. Let's see who's calling the timeout. It's an official timeout. An official timeout. Official we'll, timeout. We'll stay here on the field. This will probably be a short one. That's what Wes it will. So. Yeah, it looked like an equipment timeout. Yeah. I believe that was so, Calder yep. Kundi's jersey was riding up on him a little bit. Third down, Bay River. Oh, here come the Bruins. Veronica out to the right. Scott down, handoff. Breaks through. That is... That's that is Bay. Is that Bay's? That is Bay. Austin Bay is just running over people. First down. Yeah, that was big. Austin Bay is not the biggest player out on the field, and that worked to his advantage. He was able to slip through a hole undetected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, Bays in a cloud of dust, as he's known. <laughs> they call the KNCO Tom Fitzsimmons calls him the truth because because nobody can handle the truth. <laughs> here's a here's a rollout looking downfield, and it's going to be called. Oh, almost caught by the Bruins, and that was intended for. Oh, that was intended for. Uh, Man, I can't, I can't see the number here. Well, that was Pratt, Garrett Pratt. He was open, uh, but I think the ball was tipped. Did, uh, did you see that? It, it was certainly close. I personally thought that throw was a little bit uh, wide. It, it, so now that'll bring up second down and 10. It's going to be tough to hang on to the ball when you're going through the air, that's for sure. In motion, there's Moronic, left side, got a block. Cuts it in and up. Ironic inside the 25 yard line. Dropped by number 42, James Boswick. And number one, Dorian Dockery. Boswick on the tackle. Well, it's another third and medium. And third down, about five yards to go. Bear River's been picking up medium yards on just about every play. They haven't only stopped him on the very first play. High snap. He's got a man open, wide open, and it slips out of his hands. Had him wide open over there, intended for Cundy. It just slipped right out of his hands. That'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, that's exactly right, Marty. He had him wide open, perfectly designed. Yeah. Quick out play to the sideline. That's uh, first down all, written all over that. There was nobody out there covering him. Yeah, the kicking so, team not on the field. No, they'll... Uh, Well, that ball's slippery. The field is uh, kind of torn up with all that rain that we had, so. So let's see if they can do anything with a fourth down. Rolling out again. Looking downfield and overthro overthrows him and incomplete. I don't know why they did, just didn't go for the first down. Yeah, that's a, that's a gutsy play call for sure. So, a turnover on down. I think wor will take worst over. case scenario, which is 
pretty much what happened there is a turnover on downs with Rippon getting it fairly deep in their own territory. So I guess no real harm done. Well, a first down would have been a lot better for him, but uh, that didn't work out too well. So uh, the quarterback in shotgun formation is Daggett. Oh, bad snap. And he's going to end up, and he recovered it. It's going to be a big loss on the play. Wow. Ryan Daggett recovers back. Welcome to the polar vortex, <laughs> Ripon. That's going to happen all night. Yeah. That's a loss of about eight. A 10 yard loss, second down. So that'll bring up uh, second down and 20. And trying to go over the left side, but being knocked down by the whole bevy of uh, Bruins. Short carry off the left side for number four, Roland Davis. Roland Davis, the running back. Not on, on that humanity. <laughs> The humanity there of the, <laughs> between the between both squads trying to block and trying to tackle that was I couldn't see who, uh, anything even with the binoculars there so well, the muddy uh, jersey doesn't help no third down now two backs in the backfield for Daggett oh they broke through and stopped him on that quick handoff wow like the, looks like the line didn't even block there. Well, Bear River wasn't fooled by the play action. They swarmed all of the holes up the middle. And there was absolutely nothing. So with the punt deep in his own uh, part of the field, they, Bear River could get good field position. Yeah, they're lining up on the 50 to get this kick. Almost blocked. I think that might have been blocked. It was tipped, certainly. Let it go. Get it out of the way. There we go. It's on the 35-yard line. Wow. It looked like it was just tipped. It, it was either tipped or it was taken way off the ankle. It was very tough to tell from the angle yeah. where we're sitting. but it, That thing just jumped straight up in the air there. So Yeah. I, either way, that was not yeah. at all what Rippin wanted to do. From just inside the 34-yard line. So the Bruins have a ball in good, great field position. See what they can do on, on their second possession. Quick handoff up the middle and uh, not going anywhere. Austin Bay's got maybe a yard on that. Yeah. Second down. I think the play calling is going to have to be to the outside here because that Rippon has uh, got some big guys up front and they're. Uh, it's gonna be hard to run up the middle, I think. I mean, it's tough because they've got they've got the big guys up the middle, but they've got some speedy secondary yeah. players too. So shotgun formation. Let's see, rolling out now. There's gonna be a penalty called. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be a false start. False start. That'll move them back five yards. 519 left to go in this first quarter. Bear Rivers' uh, second possession. Back to the. 37-yard line, second down. CIF Sacquaquin section playoffs, also presented by Crystal Creamery. Well, so far, Bear River Crystal definitely Foster. winning the possession battle. Their time of possession is phenomenal so far. I believe they've had it for about well, all for all for about two minutes. The Rippin had it. Yeah, right. Pass situation here on the rollout. Looking. And he unbolt another pass intended, intended for Cundy. Baggett is just struggling. Uh, is, has he completed a pass yet? He's 0 for, isn't he? 0 for 4. Yeah. And that one was just a tough pass. He's, yeah, he's, he's rolling left. Rolling left, yeah. he has to throw across his body. And it looked like he had a good grip on it. But that That's... That's really tough for a high school quarterback to throw across your body to a moving target. So big third down play here. Empty backfield. They got a big rush and they caught it. He's going to be short of the first down. That's the Trey Moronic. 
Well, that was, he threw that into double coverage. Yeah, that was a dangerous pass, but yeah. it, it worked out. That's a, about an 11-yard gain. Still short, but they're pretty much exactly where they were when they went for fourth down before. Yeah. Now, timeout's called as uh, Bear River calls a timeout. So, with uh, timeout on the field, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at TouchdownProductions.com. We'll be back in 30 seconds. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by BNC True Value Home and Garden Center in the Fowler Center in Grass Valley. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Welcome back to Bear River Football here at fourth down and about uh, about four and a half yards to go. So once again, Bear River going on fourth down. Well, this will be a 44-yard field goal attempt in pretty bad conditions. Yeah. No, they'll they'll they're going to actually go for it because uh, Alex Bond is not on the field. So. Two backs in the backfield for the Bruins, rolling out to his right, looking for blocking. He, he throws and it's going to be almost intercepted. Wow, he had his man wide open over there. Once again, it'll be a turnover on downs. So once again, with 419 left to go here in this first quarter, Bear River turns it over on fourth down and uh, just can't seem to get the passing game working here tonight well, early. Rip, Rippin actually gets bailed out by the failed interception. As he went down about seven yards deeper than they have yeah, right now. Exactly. Baggett might have been able to run that, but tonight's game is being broadcast by Touchdown Productions. Joe Dominguez and the Touchdown crew providing coverage for you on their YouTube channel after the game. Touchdown Productions YouTube channel. There's a handoff, nowhere to go, and he's still on his feet. 32, Riley Machado, Boy, that, 50 for the Bruins, Hayden Becker Yeah, really only picked up about two yards. Yeah. So far, two yards is the longest play Rippin has. Second down and They're out of the huddle in a hurry here. Second down and about eight. There's a handoff left side. He's got some running room, but picks up a couple. Davis on the carrier. Yeah, Davis with a, a quick cutting move to get back up the middle for the medium gain. And that's not the longest play the Ripon has. That'll bring up third down and long. Rolling out, looking, 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 and he's oh, and he's going to get brought down for a life. Fumbles the ball, and the Bruins have it. That's, and it's not. I don't. I think they're going to call that a fumble. Yes, they do. Bear River has it. That's a good call from the officials. He was hit from behind. That ball yeah. slipped out well in advance of him going down. 18, I believe, Garrett Pratt. Garrett Pratt. So Bear River has a chance again. They're getting these chances, but they just can't put the clothes on it here, Steve. Well, it's nice that their defense is getting off the field quickly at yeah. the very least. But the only problem, a lot of the guys going both ways. <laughs> so it's not like the college or the pros, boy. These with the small squad that Bear River has, they're there, they, uh, a lot of the guys going both ways, so it's kind of tough. Well, true. I bet if you ask any of them, they'll say offense is way more fun. Oh, yeah, exactly. They get to hit somebody that way. Doesn't feel like work out there. All right, as a handoff, Zimmer, right side. No place to go. He's lucky he got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they. Yeah, the, the Rippin defensive line is huge, absolutely huge. They have a 300-pound lineman out there in high school. Wow. The section would like to thank Wilson for their sponsorship of these fine athletes tonight. 
All right, Cundy into the ball game. Flanker out to the left. Scott out to the right. Can't even see Baggett's number anymore on the back of his jersey. And that's going to be a reverse around the left side. Oh, pulled down. How about a, how about a horse collar? Where's the flag? Their fans are calling for a horse collar. But I... Uh, about three yards on the play, bring up third down. That's a tough one. Yeah. That, that would be a, a great pickup anyway. It would save Bear River from a third and 12. That would give them an automatic first down. Yep. If well, the referees for, didn't see it that way, so. There were, there were two that had a great angle on it. It's, it's possible that he just got the jersey over the pads and not the pad itself, but that, that's, that's a tough call. Got looking deep, and he's got, oh, no. Nobody over there. Better, there he's down the sideline. He can go. He's got some good speed, and they run him out of bounds at the 55. Well, there's a flag the down. 45. There's a flag down right about where Baggett threw the ball. So there's a distinct possibility. Could be roughing the passer. It could be roughing the passer. If it's a hold, it's certainly going to be declined, and the ripping offense is running out on the field. I would assume that's the call. Let's see what the call is. Hold, oh, yeah, good call, Steve. They're ripping well, with the first signs of life. life. Yeah, Huge they, interception. Right on the 50-yard line. Exactly midfield. So we've got 111 left to go in this uh, first quarter. So let's see if the de defense can rise to the occasion again. This could be the first time they'll be in Bear River territory tonight. Handoff left side. I can't tell the number. It got some good speed, but brought down in there by Moronic. That's rolling that's Davis. That's number four. That's Davis. Big gain, about 15, 16 yards there. Luke Baggett on the tackle. 17-yard gain. Oh, hole finally opened up for Davis to run yeah. it. Yeah. And Hand off the same play again, left side. And they bring him down. That was Allberg on the tackle for about six yards. So once again inside whatever they discussed at the, at the last time they uh, lost possession, it seems to be working a lot better on this possession. Another, oh, another big pickup. That is uh, number 23, Winters, Winters, the ball carrier. Winters has Down the bulk the of the carries for this Rippin team. They may not be as low to the ground or as quick as Roland Davis, but he is dependable. So uh, they've got some momentum here as the Indians come to the, up to the line of scrimmage. Hit quick handoff up the middle, and they, he's still on his feet. And he's going to pick up some good yardage. Machado, the ball carrier. Down to about the 17 yard line. That should be the end of the first and quarter. And, and with the uh, timeout on the field, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruins football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is underwritten by Auburn Toyota. Auburn Toyota on the Grass Valley Highway in Auburn. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Well, welcome back to the start of the second quarter. Marty Mortensen and Steve Sitter here bringing you all this exciting action. As uh, Bear River stumbled on their first three possessions, they got deep into the Indians territory, but now after for their third possession, the Indians have now come out strong and driven the ball down the field after that uh, interception. Handoff, that number four again. That is uh, that's D Davis. And a long well, after the first quarter, 
Rippon managed 36 rushing yards, including that 10 yard loss on their first ever play. And Bear River was just 40. The Bear River was one for seven passing for just 11 yards plus an interception. So hit and uh, driving on, still moving. And, and there's no, still no whistle. Let's see what they, what they call there. Got enough for a first down. First down, Indians. Yeah, he, he fought very hard for those four yards. That was a great individual effort. Well, he did that all on his own. Well, here comes the grind from Rippin now. See if Bear River can stop this drive. Oh, a timeout call. They jump off, did they? Well, Rippin, they, they come to the line and then they all come, they all go down in unison. Five yard penalty. Somebody jumped off the side. I didn't see who it was. First and five on the sixth. Hand, handoff, left side. Still driving, still driving. And now brought down Machado, the ball carrier. Well, that's what Riley Machado is in there to do. He is very large. He plays way more than the 185 that he's listed. Yeah. And all he does is punch it in the end zone from a few yards out. Now, timeout called. So Bear River calls a timeout. Second timeout. And with timeout on the field, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is being underwritten tonight by Port of Subs, with two locations in Nevada City and Grass Valley, and Touchdown Productions celebrating 20 years of local sports television. Well, we're back, and the Indians won the march here. Handoff, right side, and he runs into the Bruins. Right side. Oh, give it back to Machado. Yeah, Machado, the ball carrier, and got a couple. They can still get a first down. That should bring up third down. Third down. Well, Machado keeps putting up one-yard games, yeah, and that's yeah, the beauty no. of having a first and five situation. Is that will still work? Yep. In motion and a handoff on a sweep coming around the right side. And oh, nice play in there. That was Calder Cundy. It looked like, was it Cundy or Moronic? Tackle for a loss. That is going to bring up fourth down. That is a huge, huge play. play. Trey Moronic on the big tackle of 23, Michael Winters. Not only is that a two yard loss on a third and short play. But that, that was just a great individual effort. He made that tackle through a block. I saw that, yeah, that was uh, quite a, I couldn't see who it was though. I, I think that was Moronic. Was it Moronic? What, great play for a wide receiver, yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so. He's an all around fine ball player, no place to go. Broken play in the end zone, and he dropped the ball, I think. And he, Bear River covered that, and they go for and out there. Oh, he had it in his hands. James Galswick had it in his hands and had it ripped out before he could retain possession. Great defensive stop for Bear River. So it looked like a broken play at the start as he rolled, as he tried to hand it off and nobody was there and then he rolled off to the left. Maybe that was the way it was designed. I couldn't tell. So and that, that looked like it was executed about as perfectly as you could. Okay. But just having the ball ripped out of your hands in the end. Zone. So Bear River now, and that's, there's Bays on the move, and he's down for a first down out to the 26 yard line. Running with authority out there tonight. He's, he's a senior, and uh, this could be his last game if they don't step up and win this. That was so a good he, run. Again, yep. good patience, waiting for the hole to open up, and then when it does, no need to rush it. Just slip through, follow your block. So 
big run in there by Austin Bays sets gets them way out out of their uh, deep in their own end zone area. There's a handoff up the left side over the left side, and that Zimmer, the ball carrier, gets about to the 40 yard line, and that'll be a pickup of maybe four yards. Four yard gain, second down and six. Well, finally, the big plays are opening up for Bear River. They've been putting it through the air to limited success. And now holes are opening up in Rippon's line, just like in Bear River's line the previous possession. There's a handoff, a cutback, and that didn't go anywhere. The Zimmer, the ball car carrier. Well, he tried to cut back up the middle, but his leg came out from under him. He managed to recover and yeah. try and get behind a blocker while he found another hole, but there just wasn't enough time. So. <laughs> Bays comes back into the lineup. 33, Dylan Sexton, the linebacker on the tackle for Rippon. And see if they have a pass play third coming up here. Six. Third down and six. Cundy and Moronic out here to the, to the right. Rolling out, looking, looking, looking. He's got it, and that could be, could be enough for a first down. It is. That is uh, Moronic. Yeah, that's another 11-yard gain through the air. Just the second completed pass out of eight attempts, but it was very well timed. Keeps the drive alive and keeps Rippon's defense out on the field. That play's been open all year with Moronic. All I got to get the ball to him. <laughs> it's it's a, tough, a tough night to get yeah, that done. No kidding. Pitch back, and that's Zimmer's got no place to go with that. Tough defensive line out there for these uh, Ripon Indians. They're... Not only is it a tough line, it's a fast secondary. Yeah. So even if you manage to get through the initial rush, you've still got linebackers and safeties to deal with, many of whom are running backs and wide receivers themselves. Yeah, exactly. So that'll bring up second down and about 11. Two backs in the backfield. Fakes the handoff, looking downfield. And he's got, he's got Marani, he catches it. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, man, as he went down to the ground, that ball had to be thrown just a little bit farther. Yeah, exactly. It kind of hung up in the air. He had to pull back, back yep. and try and make the catch over a defender, which just makes it so much harder. Yeah. We have third down in 10 for Bear River. The uh, ball boys really getting a workout because they're switching balls. As soon as it hits the ground, they, uh, oh, they're yeah. bringing you in a new to. ball because of the ground so wet. You absolutely have to. You can see the players' jerseys, how dirty they are. We've only played a quarter and a half. Yeah, 6.45 left to go in this first half. Still no score. Both teams on a defensive struggle. And that that is intended for, see, who who was that? I, pass is complete. To Scott. And that'll bring up fourth down. We'll have to punt, it looks like. Yeah, in your own territory, you don't yeah, want to have a turnover on down. About four yards, bring up fourth down. Back to punt is uh, Alex Bond. Back to receive. Got two receivers back there. Number 23. And boy, this is getting hard to tell the numbers here. Pretty good kick. And it's, been. Yeah, and it's going to go dead. And there's a flag right there. You got that right. That's about a yard and that no was and that was Daniels that got got knocked down on that play, and that's going to cost them 15 yards yeah, after the punt. Now here's the question: If that penalty happens before the punt, well, Bear River might still have. No, possession. it was. It, I, I just saw it right at the end there. So it's going to step off 15 yards against them from the from the spot of the where the ball was down. That's still a needless penalty. Oh yeah, there was no need. But the, he was he was 20 yards away from where the ball was. So 6:01 left to go here in this first half, and they'll step it off here as soon as the rep. Hit on the defenseless player, receiving team, 15-yard penalty. First down. So they'll step off 15, take him all the way back to the 15-yard line. 
will back the football up That'll be, inside the 20 yard line. At the 17, looks like. I mean, they had they had all right field position before the penalty. Now inside their own 20, yeah. they've got a lot of work to do in six minutes. So Daggett over center here, one back in the backfield. Man in motion, hands it to him, tries to cut it up the middle, but nobody's there. Stopped in there by Sam Davis for the Bruins. That was a good tackle from behind, too. Yeah. It's tough to tackle a running back from behind. That was well done. So that, that picked up maybe a yard and a half, second and eight, probably. And about nine. Shotgun formation for the Indians here. Oh, and he jumped off. Oh, he got in the neutral zone. I don't know if they're going to call it or not, but got back. Yeah, a nice tackle in there. 23, Michael Winters. Uh, Winters, the ball carries Zimmer. Zimmer uh, comes down. Josh Zimmer dragged him down there. It'll bring up third down and short. Third down and. And that's that, that quick motion. Yeah, that, that everyone through the, on the ripping line has. Yeah. See, they're all up right now. They're, they're still up, waiting for everyone to get in position. Wait for the hard count and down. Handoff, and, and they and they think they stopped them. Yes, they did. Short of the first down, that was. Davis, the ball carrier. On the tackle. Now they got it. Well, they did get it. Oh, I Just thought he was short. The Indians. That's the head referee making the call, so you know he has to be certain. Yeah, right. Wow. If they could have almost had him in the backfield on that handoff. So 425 and counting here in the first half. Defensive struggle. There's a sweep to the right, number 23 again. He's going to get brought down. Gains about two, 18 kill at Pratt. Now for the Bruins. Winner's the ball carrier. Pratt on the tackle. 76, Kate Nolbert. Uh, pick up about two, a little over two and a half, maybe. Yeah, Winner's just not getting a whole lot of running around. No. Looking to pass out in the flat. And all right, good defensive play in there by. Was it, uh, it couldn't be a. That was a lateral. And Muff, you know, got to get on that ball. Austin Bays with a smart heads up play. <laughs> and how did no one know from the rip inside line? How did the quarterback not realize that that pass was behind his intended receiver? Behind the uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Behind from where he yeah, was right, throwing. Yeah. So Bear River catches break with 334 left. That'll be the second fumble of the first half for referees are discussing it here. Well Bear River thought it was a uh, a lateral fumble. And no referee. There are four yeah, that can first make that down call. Bruins. The fact that no referee immediately whistled it dead makes me think that either none of them had a clear view, which is unlikely, or at least one of them knew decisively that that pass yeah. was backwards. So a big break down the left, uh, on the on the 12 yard line for the for the Bruins. But can they score? Well, they've been here twice before. Already, yeah, exactly. Three backs in the backfield. Hand it off to Bays, up the middle, still on his feet. Touchdown, Bruins! Austin Bays comes through with a big score from 12 yards out. He scores. Bear River on the, on the scoreboard with 3.28 left to go with the first six points of the game on that. He, fumb, he picks up the fumble on the uh, lateral, and now he takes it in on the first play. Great hole opened up by the line, Steve. Yeah, nothing fancy about that run whatsoever. Maybe one cut to the left and then a cut back to the right uh, once he gets to that second level. But really, that's just that's just a run straight ahead. Great work by the line to open it up for him. So, and uh, 
Bond will be in to uh, kick the extra point. Doing the holding is, uh, that is Jenkins. Kick that, that's good, into the trees. All right, seven nothing the Bruins with 3.28 left to go in this first half. And with timeout on the field, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruins football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by Placer Title Company with offices in Auburn and in Grass Valley and by Touchdown Productions, your leader in sports television since 1997. All right, we're back here at J. David Ramsey Stadium. The Bruins on top, seven to nothing. And Steve, why don't you uh, tell us about that uh, Austin Bay's touchdown? Well, it's a formation that Bear River really likes, especially uh, when they are trying to run it up the middle is they stack the middle. And with so many running backs, it's difficult to really key on any one player. But once Bays gets the ball, all he needs is a little hole to get into that second level. Line opens it up for him, one quick cut, one broken tackle, and it's a clear shot right to the end zone. So here come the uh, Bruins will kick off back to receive. Is, uh, I can't tell the uniforms anymore. I'm in deep trouble. Pretty sure that's rolling <laughs> Davis on yeah, the Yeah, Davis side. And, <laughs> and 23 winners. And it's going to be a kick. They're going to be taken about the 10. And, oh, missed that tackle, but Bear River covers it up at the 30. The return man up to about the 28-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Indians. Yeah, 18 yard return, not yeah. bad for Davis. Had pretty good blocking in front of him, too. Now, one of the things about Alex Bond, the start of the season when it was summertime and the field was great, he was putting the ball on the end zone. They were getting the ball out of the 20 every time, the opponent. So here we go. The, the Bruins up 7 0, 323 left to go in the half and now the Riffin Indians are on their own 25-yard line. So back to passing it again, looking downfield. And, and oh, is it intercepted? Let's see if they call it. No. And that was Cundy. He's, Cundy leads the team in interceptions this year. I think that was the right call, though. One of the side referees was the one who made it and he had a perfect view. I think that slipped just through his arms and the tip of the ball managed to hit the turf. So it'll bring, bring up second down in, uh, and 10 as they're into passing mode here with, with uh, 316 left to go. Now there's a handoff right up the middle, but coming up and making the stop, Austin Bays from, that was for a gain, a short gain of maybe three yards. So that'll bring up third down and seven. And that hit could have been a lot more devastating had the legs of Roland Davis not come out from under him. As it was, he managed to slip most of that tackle. So uh, the play comes in, Daggett. Oh, that. So now it's shotgun formation in motion. That's winners and they double reverse. And well, they get him. Nice tackle in there. And that was uh, Pratt on that tackle. Stopped that play for no gain. That'll bring a fourth down. Davis, the ball carrier. And Rippin has to punt again. First punt in the first quarter was either blocked or taken high off the ankle. So back to receive is Cundy. Almost got it, but it's a short kick and it's going to go out of bounds at about the Bear River 38 yard line. So that'll be uh, first and first and 10 with, with 148, but they've stopped, the, they haven't stopped the clock. 146 now. That's still plenty of time, although Bear yeah. River does only have one timeout left. left. Right. Well, they, if they can get down uh, to where they get in field goal position, you saw the leg of Alex Bond. He put that ball in the trees. So we'll have to see what happens here. <laughs> also, so, watch the field conditions. As the, as the game goes on, the field will deteriorate, yeah. making it harder to kick. So shotgun formation is Baggett. 
looking, rolling out, looking, looking. He's got his man, and now, now he's got to get a block, but he runs out of bounds and knocked out of bounds in there by 23. That is uh, winners. Able to get up to about the 45-yard line, number 33, Dylan Sexton on the tackle. Was that Sexton? Can't t 33. I thought it was 20. The jerseys, <laughs> white jersey with mud. I mean, I'm in trouble. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think anyone told Rippin that it, it, uh, it, it had been raining here a little bit the past few days. That hasn't, didn't rain much down down south, but uh, so so here come the here come the Bruins. Shotgun formation, three receivers out to the left. Handoff, looking to hand it off, but under pressure, nobody over here. Now here comes. Oh, that was intended for Cundy. Well, that was a really good job of Cundy yeah. to react. Instead of trying to make the catch, just try and prevent an interception. Yeah, that was uh, nice defense in the secondary there by Doherty as he had that interception. And there was uh, nothing but green grass down that sideline had he picked that off. Well, both safeties for Rippon are wide receivers. No, they have excellent hands. That's the second potential interception that's just been out of their reach. So now, obvious passing situation here. Looking, looking, looking downfield, trying to get somebody, and he, he throws, he tries to. There's a flag. What was that? What was the call? Did you see? Their fans are. Saw it. There's only ripping players in yeah, in the yeah. area where the flag was thrown. Flag down. Let's see what they call. The only thing I can think might is be a, taunting. Oh, oh Bear against Bear River. Yeah. That was Hurtado downfield across the line of scrimmage. I'm a little surprised that they're not going to decline the penalty. That would bring up fourth and five. And now they're going to ask. Let's see what they, uh, what the, I would, I would definitely make them kick it with 124 left. Absolutely. Ineligible receiver downfield, offense, penalties declined. There it is. Yeah. I had thought that was the call, because you don't want to give them another chance. It, no, third, third and 10 is very doable. Fourth yeah. and five, you, that's, that's a, a bit yeah. riskier, especially midfield, going into halftime. And Machado back deep. Bond to kick. No rush, good kick. It's over his head. He's going to let it go. It's going to go all the way on down to the nine yard line. Down in there. Alex Bond, Jenkins on the down. Once again, Bear River kicker doing his job. And Bond with very interesting mechanics. It's kind of a hybrid between tr a traditional punting motion and a rugby style kick. It manages to generate a surprising amount of topspin, allowing it to roll further downfield. Well, he's he's a sophomore, and he's uh, and he's a soccer player. So I mean, he's and he's got the leg. So he, he's going to be a big asset for the Bruins in the coming years. This is his first year playing football. There's a handoff, and coming up and making that stop, that is. <laughs> That was uh, Jarrett Bays, Austin's little brother, make that stop. Almost jumped out into the neutral zone. It's tough. There's a lot of motion going on, yep. both on the ripping line and with the man in motion. Pretty much every play, it's tough to time. Under a minute now until half time. So we got less than a minute now. Hand off, a sweep. Got a good block, but the Bruins are right there. Winters. Winners, the ball carrier. All the way back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up. Uh, I, if I was if I was Bear River, I might want to call a timeout here. Their last one with 26 seconds. Hold them here and let them kick it. But no. Nope. Well, it's third down. They only have the one timeout. Even yeah. if they do call it, they still you know they still run it on third down and let the clock run out into halftime. I'm a little surprised the Rippin isn't just taking a knee. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like they're in any hurry. In motion, and there's a handoff right, right side. The horn honks, and they get him for, for uh, maybe an eight-yard gain, and that ends the half. So here at, at the end of the first half, Bruins up 
seven to nothing. And we'd like to remind you that you're watching exclusive coverage of the Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is underwritten tonight by SPD Markets. The Painter family reminds you to be local and shop local. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 21 years of local sports television. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by B&C True Value Home and Garden Center in the Fowler Center in Grass Valley. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Well, Marty Mortensen along with uh, Steve Sitter. Steve, uh, we've got some statistics as the teams come back on the field. What do you got for us? It's kind of a defensive struggle tonight. Well, you and I talked about it uh, before before we went on the air about how this, this was going to be primarily a defensive game. In fact, two of my three keys uh, to the game tonight were defense related. But I don't think either one of us knew that it was going to be seven to nothing at halftime. That is, that, that, that is way more of a defensive game than I was expecting. But credit where it's due, both teams' defenses have been playing fantastic and that does show up in the stat line. Rippin, 0 for 2 in passing. And they're not a passing team, so that's not too unusual. Only 65 yards of, wow. of, uh, of total rushing. Offense. Wow. Yeah, 65 total yards on the ground. Bear River wasn't that much better with 79 total rushing yards and uh, 3 for 11 through the air for 27 yards. Combined, these teams only had 171 yards of total offense. Combined. That is extremely low. And sure, part of that... Uh, is the field. Part of that is the cold, moist air making it a little bit harder to grab onto the ball. Certainly, we've seen both teams uh, drop passes or, in Rippin's case, interceptions that ordinarily they have under regular circumstances. Uh, that they just have to come up with. That's not all of it. Both of these teams are here in the postseason. They were both able to pull off upsets in the previous round because they are well-rounded teams, and that really shows on the defense. Neither of these teams have stars. They are full teams up and down the roster, and we are seeing an absolute struggle tonight here in the polar vortex. Hey, welcome back to J. David Ramsey Stadium. Marty Mortensen along with Steve Sitter. And we're ready for the uh, second half kickoff as uh, Alex Vaughn and the 40-yard line will be kicking off and back to receive. There's uh, uh, number uh, four Davis and number 23 winners. There's a kick that's going to be taken at the 10-yard line and up the middle and they get him about the 29 yard there's a flag down here let's see what happened 
Yeah, I think that's that going to be, it's gonna be on the hit. It might be helmet to helmet. That was a big hit. Was it? Uh, I didn't. See, I didn't see where it was. It, Bear River's acting like it's going to be against, and it is going to be against the uh, Ripon Indians. Ooh, block to the back. Penalty is going to be against Ripon. Well, they are inside the 30, so this will be slightly shortened. In fact, they're right about at the 30. Yeah. Block in the back, receiving team number 58. 10 yard penalty, first down. I saw Jake Leonard was complaining to the to the referee, so I guess that uh, that's where it was. I didn't see it, but I was watching the run back. So here we go, first and 10 for the Indians. And they have a long way to go. One back in the backfield with the uh, with Daggett. He's going to run the ball and uh, he's going to be knocked down. In terms of yards per carry, Daggett is their most efficient runner. He's averaging almost Davis six yards per carry. Tackle along with Bays. And he gets the, six there. Also Bays on the tackle. Well. But the Leonard first defender for the Bruins, I didn't see who it was, didn't Second wrap him up. He hit him Indians. at the line of scrimmage, but didn't wrap him up. So here we go. It's uh, the second down in about a little over five. And there he goes again. And now he's going to be stopped in their nice defensive play by the initial Ryan Daggett, the quarterback. That was, uh, that looks like Trey Nix was the first one to hit it. So it'll be third down and five. 66, Trey Nix, first one there for Bear River. Yeah, Ryan Daggett has about 90 rushing yards per game. Not bad for a quarterback. Yeah. So two, re two receivers out to the right, one to the left, in shotgun formation, looking to pass, quick pass over the middle, and he's got his receiver, and it's going to be a first pass down. To Davis. That was Pat Davis. The tackle, first down Indians. There was nobody nearby him for the Bruins on the defense. That was a well-drawn-up play. First yeah. completed pass of the night for Rippon, and it's good for a third down conversion. Quick handoff, left side. Got a couple of you, maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. That's winners. Pratt in on the tackle. Along with Nix, and uh, looks like that is uh, that is Davis who's limping. He looks like he's hurt. That's not good. Second down and eight. Roland Davis is a great all-purpose player. Yeah, he's uh, he's hurting a little bit here. Looking to pass. And Look at the Davis. that was Coming Davis. Play number five, Josh Zimmer, for Bear River. Zimmer on the defense there. He tried to cut and he couldn't. No, He's coming not, off the field now. Yeah, you're not going to be able to stop on a dime midfield. Not, not in these conditions. That'll bring up third down and long. Rolling out, big rush over the middle, and it's going to be caught for a first down right in the. And that is. Winters, that's Baggett and. Zimmer on the tackle. Boy, big play right there, Steve. Well designed, too, that route. It was. Uh, it just found a soft spot in the Bear River secondary. Yeah, there were three Bruins around the play, but none of them were able to influence no. it enough to cause and an incomplete. They had. Uh, they also had. A good pass rush, but he was able to get that ball off very quickly. 9.33 left to go in this third quarter. Indians on the move. First and 10. In motion, handoff, 23 winners, left side. And they're going to get him for a loss. And they knock him down. Back to the... Yeah, there's a reason now the team has been trying to stretch their run game to the sidelines. That was Carpenter. Their oh. secondaries are ridiculously oh, yeah. fast. That was Carpenter, Nix, 
And Leonard in on that tackle, throwing for a loss. That'll bring up second down and Leonard and Carpenter and 12. Moses on the stop for Bell River. It's going to bring up second down and long, about 12. 840 and counting here as clock continues to run. Shotgun for Mike's looking to pass, going long. Uh, and come on, that was worse. That, that looked like the uh, offensive player kind of drugged the defender, the moronic. There was definitely some contact yeah. on the hands. Daggett looking for number 42, James, James Galswick. Trey Moronic, 22. He's doing everything he could there to prevent an interception. Yeah, right. He's a senior, 200 pounds. He got down that field very quickly. Yeah, ran a good route, just the ball wasn't where it needed to be. So let's see if the, Bear, if the Bruins will put a rush on. Rolling out, looking, looking. Throw, and it's going to be intercepted by Daggett down the sideline. He's at the 40, running it out of bounds in the 35. Daggett is just a thief out there in the, this season. So with 8.16 left to go here in this third quarter, Bear River comes up big with an interception by Baggett. I can't think of a better way to make up for throwing an interception than yeah, picking right. one yourself. That was right to it. Oh, yeah. It was lucky it was the intended receiver. So a big turnover there for the uh, Bruins. So let's see if, the, if they can capitalize here. They did on that lateral fumble. So now let's see. Baggett over center, two backs in the backfield. Hand off to Bays, right up the middle, going for Boston about three uh, three yards, grinding it out. About five down to the 30 yard line. Yeah, that's been the best uh, yeah. the best offensive decision for Bear River. Number 72. Uh, giving it to Bays up the middle, let the line Gullinger. try and open up a hole for him. That's a tough order to give your offensive line when you're looking at Rippin's defensive line. And they look like a college team out there. Yeah. All right, second down and about six for the uh, Bruins. Shotgun formation, three backs in the backfield. Hand off to Bays again. Left side, still on his feet, but then he's brought down. Bays, maybe a half yard. A little extracurricular activity going on in there. Once again on the tackle. Yeah, that's going to be an injury and timeout beaten. here. Is, there's a Bruin rolling around on the field. That's 57 for the Bruins. That is Carrillo, the lineman. Well, the line, to their credit, they've been putting in the work. It's like it might be a cramp. <laughs> Injury timeout for the Bruins. And like I was saying, the, the Rippin defensive line, just a big group of guys out there. And it's, it's tough to open up holes when you're trying to push 300 pounds, 275 pounds in a direction it doesn't want to go. 57, of course, it's cold nine, night, too. And we've been talking about that all doors. night. It's, it's definitely cramp weather. So, Carrillo off to the sideline to work that cramp out, and it'll bring up third down for the third Bruins and about, five. And about five for the Bruins. Moronic on the handoff, trying to sweep the left side. He's going to get stopped for a short game. That'll bring up fourth down. Let's see if they if they kick it or they try to get the uh, first down. Now uh, you're you're pretty much in the same exact spot where yeah. your first two uh, failed fourth downs were. Uh, you go for it those two in a tie game. You go for it the third time with a small lead. All right. Fourth down and about four yards to go. Shotgun formation, three receivers out to the right. Rolling out, looking, and he's wide open in the corner, and he goes out of bounds. Calder Cundy on that reception. So that was a big completion, Steve. And it's the same play that they tried to run in the first quarter oh, yeah. with the, the pass just slipping out of his hand. This time he manages to put it on target. And it's tough. It's one of the toughest coverages uh, if you are 
in the secondary is to that, that quick outplay to the sidelines, especially with three wide receivers in that general area. It's tough to figure out where they're all going. All right, we've got uh, Bruins got a first down. They're going to they're gonna delay a game, and it's going to be a timeout called by the Bruins. So with timeout on the field, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is underwritten by Auburn Toyota. Auburn Toyota on the Grass Valley Highway in Auburn. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Well, we're back after the timeout as the Bruins have got first and 10 on the ripping 25 yard line. Seems like it's getting a little bit colder there, uh, Steve. What do you think? <laughs> I must be getting used to it. Then, oh, I, I okay. thought the opposite. Shotgun formation, uh, shift, and there is Moronic again. He cuts it up the middle, and he squirts forward, and I literally say squirt because he <laughs> squirted right on that field, and he picks up a couple. It's tough to say whether he, he got tripped, tripped up or back. if he just slipped. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough to tell. Second down and eight. So, two backs in the backfield, handoff, Bays. Still driving, still driving. Austin Bays to the 20. 20 yard David line. Chen, third down and six. Third down and six for the uh, teams, Galswick. Galswick in on that tackle. We've called his name a lot tonight. 540 left to go in this third quarter as the clock continues to run. Bear River. Bear River needs a score on this possession. Steve. Well, they've, they've run the ball five times for gains of five, zero, two, two, and two. Wow. Well, good defense by the uh, Ripon Indians. They got a good squad. Rolling out, looking, looking, looking. All now he's going to. He's got time to run down the sideline and he's going to be run out of bounds. I don't know if he got the first down or not. He's close. He's very close. And it looks like he's going to be short by a yard. I don't know. Well, I don't officials are going to take a look. Official timeout. All right, with timeout on the field, uh, you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruins football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is being underwritten tonight by Port of Subs, with two locations in Nevada City and Grass Valley, and Touchdown Productions celebrating 20 years of local sports television. We're back here after the timeout as the measurement just took place and it just comes up a couple of links short of a first down with 508 left to go in this third quarter. I think what we ought to do here uh, for the Bruins, if I'm the, if I was the coach, I would just uh, give it to Bays and let him, let him drive it on his own. Well, let's not discount the possibility of a field goal. Well, no, I think, I, I know that Alex Bond can make it. That, but would, that, that would make it a two possession game. Yeah. But if they, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like they're gonna do that. Yeah, no, they're they're gonna they're gonna go for it. They only have one run for a loss on the night, but they do have three runs, or excuse me, four runs that only made it back to the line of scrimmage. And there's the handoff, and they fumbled the ball, and let's see who got it. Oh, let's, see. and it's a turnover. I didn't see who the ball carrier was. Michael Winters. Well, Bays is the guy. I, mean, did, 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 <laughs> I, I don't even know if Bays was in there, was he? That's a critical fumble, but that was, uh, when you're going for short yardage like that, you got to be holding on to the ball with two hands. Plus, the fact, I don't know why Baggett didn't take a quarterback sneak on that. So here come the Indians. Handoff, that's 
That is uh, Davis, the left side. Marlon Davis, left side, short run, gain of a few. Well, credit, credit to Davis. That was, that was a no yard gain until he decided to keep pushing for that extra two yards. Actually, well, they got three. three yards. Yeah. So once again, defense has struggled at both ends here for these teams. And if there's a silver lining, it's the Riffin keeps getting possession deep in their own territory. Yeah, there's a short gain in there. I can't see who the number. I just, I'm just terrible even with binoculars on the numbers. <laughs> I don't have any idea who that ball carrier was. Bay's in on the tackle. They had, had the Bruins picked up that first down, then they were definitely in field goal and, and run some more time off the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here comes a third down. Good snap, looking downfield, and it's overthrown, incomplete. That was, in, that was intended for number 23, Winners. And the ripping coach is furious, yelling at the side and referee for uh, a push. The side referee wants nothing to do with no, that. No, no. I didn't see it, but that was fourth down. The Bruins will get the ball back in pretty good field position as Cundy's back to receive the punt, doing the punting. High snap, good block, almost blocked in there by Moronic. And Calder's got it, and he can break through. He's on his way, and he brought down on a 33-yard line. He has broken a couple of them this year. Once he gets by that first, that the first set of tacklers, he's off to the races. Well, that was a very good return. He got a great block at about the 45-yard line, enabling him to cut back to the right. As initially he was making a move towards the sideline, but there was nothing there for him. So the Bruins now, after a good defensive stand, three and out for the uh, against the Indians. The Bruins will take over in Indian territory on the 34-yard line. You wouldn't think a seven-nothing ball game would turn into about <laughs> it would turn into clock management. Exactly. That's what we're seeing. Looking to pass. The and flag it, down and the there's a flag side. down intended for Cundy and just overthrown. <laughs> Let's see what the call is. I think this might be lining up in the neutral zone, judging by where that flag was thrown. Baggett looking for Calder Cundy. I mean, somebody left Second early or, or offside. Oh, illegal shift? That was, that was the initial call from the head referee. Illegal shift, offense, five-yard penalty. Not good call. Second down. That's just the third penalty for Bear River, just the fifth penalty all night. Five yard penalty against the Bruins. We'll back him up five. Well, at least in one regard, this has been a clean yard game. Line. Clap. Looks like the referees are looking at something here. It should be a first down, it is. They changed the first down. down marker. So the Bruins now, first and 15. Bag it over center. Hand off to Bays, running up the middle. And he's still grinding, he'll, he'll get back. Austin Bays ahead for about four yards. He, he got about four, and Rippin thinks that they ripped the ball out. Fans don't like it on the other side, but the whistle blew dead the play. There's no question that the whistles preceded the takeaway. Yeah, exactly. It's a question of <laughs> were the whistles a little bit quick. That, that yeah. Stop on the play. <laughs> well, Riffin doesn't no. like it. Fans are uh, showing their disapproval of that. Riffin's trying to get anything, any sort yeah. of momentum going at all. They have been playing on defense for a vast majority of this game. Hand off to Bays, no place to go, and he's slammed down to the ground. As a Dylan Sexton on the tackle. 
Clock continues to run, 228. Sexton on the tackle for the... How about James Galswick picking up Bays and throwing him yeah. to the ground? Yeah. Bays, is, uh, he's, Bays weighs <laughs> about 235. He can, bench, he can bench press 285. This will be third and 12. Blakehawks got to be running down at this point. Bear River's already taken one time out. Yeah. They're going to have to hurry here. Oh, they're going to get a five yard penalty. Delay a game. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. So that'll back them up another five. They started this drive on the. The 34 yard line, and they haven't been able to do anything except move backwards here. Yeah, that illegal shift was entirely preventable. That delay of game, again, entirely preventable. There's not really too much you can do about the holding call, say. Uh, that's just one of those in the moment things that you know, sometimes you really don't have a choice. They got the passing play in here, looks like, for the. Well, third and 17. Handoff. Zimmer gets Just tripped up. Boy, I, I don't know. They, they had a passing formation and they handed off trying to fool him, but nobody was fooled, so Bond will have to come in to kick. There's only been two plays tonight that have been longer than 15 yards. They've both been running plays and they're both for Bear River. So Bond back. The punt. They got two receivers back for the kick. Let's see what he can do here. Good snap. And it's going to be a fair catch called for down at the 10 yard line. Fair catch. It's a pretty good kick. That's right where you want it to land. If, if it lands any farther, you risk it rolling into the end zone. Yeah. So 104 left to go in this third quarter. Still no real action and uh, the Ripman's been in their own territory the whole night when they've taken possession and Bear River's been in their territory the whole third quarter Just and still about. haven't been able to. Ripman had that one pass into the end zone that was ripped out of the receiver's hands. Yep. That was the closest they've been all night. They haven't even come anywhere close to that since. And another handoff. Oh, no, get it. Oh. Oh, come on. The ball's out and a good hit. I think the Bruins have got it. They have defensive play. I don't know who hit him, but coming up with the ball for the Bruins, that is Zimmer. Wow, and, that ball popped out of there. And there's an Indian down. Yeah, let's see. What a hit. Boy, that was a big hit. No wonder that ball popped up out of there. So with timeout on the field and the turnover by Bear River to uh, uh, and we'll be right back. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. Wow. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by Placer Title Company with offices in Auburn and in Grass Valley and by Touchdown Productions, your leader in sports television since 1997. Well, we're back after that injury timeout. Uh, fortunately, that the uh, player was fine. That's Justin Hansen. He's a running back, junior, 165, and he walks off under his own steam. So now, once again, the Bruins with 55 seconds are back deep in the territory, looking to pass. And he's got in the end zone. He, oh, there's a penalty right there. Yeah, a couple of penalties come in as a. He was tackled. That was intended. That was that was for Garrett Pratt. He was wide open, and so so that'll that'll set up a 15-yard penalty. But it was. Uh, I, I don't think in my years of covering football I've seen a more blatant pass <laughs> interference. Well, it was a touchdown if he didn't drag, if he didn't penalize. So that was probably a smart play on the defensive back. He got wrapped up a full yeah. second before, before, the, before ball the ball even got, even got there. there. And when two referees throw the flag, you know that it's uh, definitely a penalty. Well, they're inside the 30, so this will be half the distance. Defense. Defense. 
No, it shouldn't be half the distance of the goal. Well, pass interference is a 15-yard penalty. penalty. right. Since they're inside the 30, it would put them more than halfway. So now they're down to the 10-yard line, so it's first and, first and goal. Well, let's see if they're going to... It's just outside the 10, so first and 10. There's a handoff to... Go! go, go. Down the... Oh, that yeah. is... Moronic being run out of bounds on a fairly good sized game. The clock continues to run here in the third quarter. We're down to 26 seconds. They may not get off another play, but it's, let's see, it's, the ball is placed on about the six yard line. It'll be close, but they've got, they've got enough time. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, come on, come on. Fans get a little antsy. There's a handoff on a sweep, left side, and getting down to about the five. So the final play of the third quarter, the Bruins get it down inside the inside the five yard line where it'll start the fourth quarter with the Bruins on the move. We've got a 21 to six placer lead and uh, we're about ready to start the fourth quarter here and you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River football on the NorCal Game of the Week at TouchdownProductions.com. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. The NorCal Game of the Week is underwritten tonight by Plaza Tire and Auto Service. Plaza Tire, with four locations to serve you in Nevada City, Grass Valley, Penn Valley, and Colfax. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of local sports television. All right, welcome back. Marty Mortensen along with Steve Sitter. As the Bruins have the ball on the uh, five-yard line, starting the fourth quarter. So let's see what they, how they line up here. The full house backfield, and it's going to be, it's going to be Carpenter on the carry. Carpenter's another one of those big backs uh, when they get down on the goal line. Carpenter's had a great year this year on defense and also on, on. So that'll be first and goal for the Bruins now down on about the one yard line. Full house backfield again. Uh, and let's see, and, the, and did he get in? Looks like a touchdown for the Bruins. Who was it? That was number 53 for the Bruins. <laughs> Travis Carpenter on the big score. Makes it 13 to nothing here. Coming in for the extra point is Alex Bond. Jenkins on the on the hold, and it's 11.41 left to go here. Just the start of this fourth quarter as Bond lines up. Let's see if we get a good snap here. Oh, low snap put up, kicked, and I think he got it, did he? Yes, he did. Way to go, Alex Bond, as he gets swarmed in there. Jenkins, nice recovery on that. So 14 to nothing in favor of the Bruins as we got a timeout on the field for the kickoff. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week, touchdownproductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is being underwritten tonight by Celestial Valley Towing, keeping the commander on the road to bring you the NorCal Game of the Week and Touchdown Productions celebrating 20 years of local sports television. All right, welcome back. Before they kick off by Bond, he's going to try to kick it in the end zone, but it's going to come taken on the five. And that's Davis, and they, they get him down at about the 10 yard or the 15 yard line, it looks like. So I'll move it out to about the 17. It'll be first and 10. 
That's the problem with the, with the grinding style of offense. It takes a lot of time and a lot can go wrong, and for Griffin's offense, a lot has gone wrong. All right, first and ten for the Indians. Two backs in the backfield, and they hand off to the fullback, and he uh, tries to go up the middle, but is dropped down in there by, let's see who made that initial hit. That was number 59 for the Bruins, Sam Davis. 33, Sexton on the carry. Sexton on the carry. First time I think we've called his name tonight, don't you? Handoff. Big hole. And they're going to get him close to the first down. Let's see who the ball carrier was, where they spot it. That's going to be close. Now they're it is going to give him a first down. I, I didn't see who the ball carrier was. Man, the uniforms are. First and 10 Indians. Hand off again, the same play, big hole over the right side. I think that's Galswick. Oh, uh, it's Sexton, Sexton again. again. Sexton's made some tackles on defense, I know yeah. that, but he's been pretty quiet on offense. Well, they're in hurry up mode here, and second down and about three. Same play again, but this time it stopped. Coming up and making that stop for the Bruins was uh, number 17, Jake Leonard. Sexton, once again, the ball carrier. Sexton, the carrier. There's another third down, and Griffin down by two possessions. They're, they're in four down mode. Good snap, and they're going to be short of the first down, it looks like. Third down. Let's see the... Indian ball carrier has stopped about a yard short. Well, they'll have to go for it. Oh, absolutely. Was, In a two-possession game, yeah, you have to that go was for 30, it. I think the ball carrier was 30. Uh, 30. Sexton again. Well, oh, they're, they're working him. Two yards to go. Well, Davis is a two-way player. Winners is a two-way player. They have to get a rest sometime. Although if they lose this game, they'll have a few months of rest. And here's fourth and two. Yeah. He's got it, and so, and more as he dives forward for a first down. Picks up a first down. Yeah, nice hole opened up. Yeah, it did. Up the middle, which is something that really hasn't happened for Rippon at all tonight. Full credit to the Bruins' defensive line. They've been putting in the work just as much as the offensive line has, if not more. Very impressive to stop this Rippon running game. Handoff on a sweep over the right side, trying to cut it up, but Bear River stops him just maybe for a half yard game. Defense for the Bruins is really swarming tonight. I can think of one sweeping run play for either team that has produced any sort of offensive game. It just hasn't been there. The secondary is too fast for both of these teams. Second down and, and nine for the Indians. Hand off to the Nope. Oh, and he laddles it back. I don't know if he was down or not. They're going to get two yards out of this. And then an extracurricular activity going on there on that hit. That lateral actually. Was broke. it a lateral or I thought it was a bump? No, it was, it was a lateral. Oh, well, that he, was the he, play? He pitched it back. Oh, okay. no, it, it wasn't the play, but he did it. Oh, okay. It was dangerous. No, it, it gained him a couple yards. Yards it did because he, he was stopped. That's, behind the line of scrimmage. That was a gutsy decision. And that's another third down. So a little bit longer. 727 left in this game. Yeah! 
And they, I think I think a false start on the on the wide receiver over there. Look, yep. like, that was Galswick. Galswick flinched. Yeah, he, on the far side. It was probably called his play, and he was going to get down there on that field. So it'll be a five-yard penalty, false start. That'll back him up. That'll bring a third down and about 15. 713 left to go in this ball game. Big stop here. Because they're going to have to start putting the ball in the air, I think. Don't you think, Steve? They've only thrown six passes today. They're two for six with an interception. Only 20 yards of offense through the air. This is not a passing team. That man in motion looking on a rollout. Can it come across the center? And, oh, and a good. Well, and he's got some speed. They're not going to catch him. He's down to the 10, 5, touchdown, Indians. That was Doherty. The whole play went right, and they threw it left, got right by Moronic or Calder, and one of the two, I couldn't tell. And there was nobody there except for a, that was a third down and 15. And I don't know where it started. It's not about the 40-yard line. It was on exactly the 40-yard 40, 40, line. That's what I thought. So a 60-yard pass play. Rippin just wow. quadrupled their total <laughs> passing yards on the, the night. night. Wow. And full credit to Doherty catching it mid-stride. Full credit to Daggett delivering it perfectly Right, right on the money. Right on the money. And Cundy was the one in coverage. It's not often he gets burned on a deep play like that. There's a high snap, put down, and kick. <laughs> and is it good? So. With timeout on the field, with 6:51 left to go in this ball game, 14 to 7 in favor of the Bruins, and we'll be right back as you're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at TouchdownProductions.com. The NorCal Game of the Week is underwritten tonight by SPD Markets. The Painter family reminds you to be local and shop local. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 21 years of local sports television. Well, we're back now with uh, 6:51 uh, left to go in this ball game, and it's now it's a 14 to 7 ball game, only a one-score game as they scored a 60-yard pass play. And Steve, why don't you talk about it? Well, I said this wasn't a passing team, but you wouldn't know it to look at that last play. Perfect pass from Daggett to Doherty mid-stride. Bakundi tries to jump the route at the last second. He tries to get a hand in to bat the pass down instead of keeping stride with Doherty. When he, when he commits to try and knock that ball out of the air, he loses a stride on a wide receiver catching midway through. That was an interesting uh, sort of uh, onside kick. It, 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 it didn't go far enough, it looked like. Huh? What and happened? Jacob Goff, who is the kicker, is looking around going, guys, I'm, I'm the kicker. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> so the, was it a, uh, did they throw a flag? Yeah. Like yeah a, near, near side referee threw the flag. Oh, they're going to, oh, they're going to offside. Offside. <laughs> so they're going for an offside. They've got, they got the hand, Bear River's got the hands team up there. I'm a little surprised they're going with the onside kick. There's almost seven minutes left in this quarter. Well, maybe That's they, plenty of time to force a three and out. Ripon still has all three of their timeouts. And now you're even deeper in your own territory. I don't think you go for the onside kick here. Yama's oh, still lined up like it's an onside yeah. kick. Now they're going to go back. Interesting. Very interesting. There's drive a, of a kick. He's down. He caught the ball down on his knees. So, so pretty decent field that, position though. Right. right. 31. But they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to move the ball. And it's so strange that most of this game was either tied or 7-0. And suddenly 14-7 seems a lot more reachable than 7-0. Exactly, exactly right. That's the power of the big play. So 
So here's on a sweep. That is uh, Cundy trying to pick up some yardage. Still on his feet. Picks up some big yardage. It might be a first down. It is. Yeah, for a, for a sophomore, this kid is, uh, he, he's a player, just like his brother, Torin. And that is the first play of the second half for Bear River that was longer than 10 yards. Just barely. <laughs> just, Bear. just barely. 631 and counting here, Bear River with the first down. And they're going to hand off to Zimmer. And uh, he doesn't, he doesn't get anything on that. Up the middle has not been working very well tonight. For uh, Jesse Torres, number 77 for Rippin. He's a 275 pound senior. Excuse me, 280 pound senior. That is a big boy. You're not going to run through that. And Bear River just hasn't doesn't have that big of players out there. I don't know many high schools that do. <laughs> Certainly not running backs. Gonna pass it and a quick pass out in the flat. He's got a he picks up some short yardage. That was to Trey Moronic. And I don't like that play call. He catches that, runs out of yeah. bounds, but it stops the clock. Clock, yeah. That's uh, now it's third down. You you want to keep that clock running at this point in the game. He should have just taken. He just could have stayed in bounds and gone down because he wasn't going to pick up that many more yards. Well, certainly not enough to get a first down. Bear River taking another timeout. Let's see what they're going to signal here. Timeout. Bear, the okay, that's one. their last one. So Bear River takes a timeout, and with 5:43 left to go in this ball game, Bear River up 14 to seven. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at TouchdownProductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is brought to you by BNC True Value Home and Garden Center in the Fowler Center in Grass Valley. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Updating the other semifinal game, they are late in the third quarter. Sonora 42, Colfax 35. Oh. All right. Welcome back. Uh, after that timeout, Bruins have got third down and six. Big play here. Looking to pass, rolling out. And, oh, and he's uh, incomplete. And that was intended for Davis. Low pass, running to the left. Stops the clock at 538. So they'll have to kick now. And again, we saw that in the first half. I believe that was in the first quarter when Luke Baggett tries to throw across his body, he tends to short arm it, and that's exactly what he did well, there. Well, it certainly did, and so now Bear River's gonna need a big kick here out of uh, Bond. Good snap, good punt, gonna go for right to him, and, and going along that, down to the 35-yard line. Fans aren't, aren't too happy with that play by number 34 for the uh, for the Indians. But now they've got a first and ten here with 5:27 left. So that wasn't a very good play sequence there for the Bruins, Steve. No, not a good play sequence, and even the punt was a little suspect. It was right down the middle. Yeah. So they get the Indians start on their own 35-yard line. And handoff up the middle of it. Allberg is the first one to hit him. The rest of the Bruins bring him down. Sexton on the ball carrier again. So that'll bring up second down and about eight. Well, to Bear River's credit, they really have shut down the run. In this in this half, Ribbon doesn't have a run longer than nine yards. Snap. Uh, Hand off to the first man through. He's going to pick up some big yardage. Going to be short of the first down, though, by about a yard. Clock continues to run. Bear River's out of all of their timeouts. And uh, I think that the Indians still have their three. They do. They do have all three. Okay. So it's third down and uh, short. Dang it.
Over center, one back in the backfield, I formation, handoff to the first back through, and he's going to get the first down and a little bit more. So that'll put the ball on about the their own 48-yard line. They're working sixth in overtime, but he's been quiet the whole first half. Shotgun formation for Daggett. Good snap, looking to pass. And they catch, he gets caught down the sideline for a gain of about seven. Ryan Daggett's pass is complete to James. Stops the clock, too, at 359. Yeah. All right. Gain of about seven yards. It'll be second down and three from the Bruins 44 yard line. So the ball's on the 44. Second down and about three. Handoff, right side. It may have been short of the first down, it looks like. Let's see where they mark it. Sexton, again, the Sexton, ball the ball carrier. Gain of a yard. That'll leave third down and two. Third and two. Uh, they're in four down territory, but the clock continues to run with 338. Yeah, 338's plenty of time to get 40 yards. Complete, almost intercepted by the Bruins, and that was intended for Davis. That pass was thrown on us on a rope, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a great pass. Yeah. Dag it. I thought they'd catch the Bruins napping there with a third and short. Almost did. Almost. The reality is that is a really, really hard pass for a wide receiver to come up with. Yeah. He has to lay out just to get his body in front of it. That's a great catch in college. In high school, it's almost unheard of. So now a timeout's going to be called here. As uh, timeout. So the Indians call timeout, 325 on the clock for this ball game here, this second round playoff. You're watching exclusive coverage of Bear River Bruin football on the NorCal Game of the Week at touchdownproductions.com. This exclusive sports telecast is underwritten by Auburn Toyota. Auburn Toyota on the Grass Valley Highway in Auburn. And by Touchdown Productions, celebrating 20 years of sports television. Fourth down and two. This is the big play right here for the Bruins defense and a big play for Rippon. They try to get him offside and they did it. I can't believe that the Bruins would get suckered into that on a watch the ball situation on a fourth and two. Oh, that got him twice tonight. That is just this late in the season. You can't go on the hut hut count. That is the mental side of football that is not often talked about. Well, now they've got first down on the Bruin 38-yard line. It wasn't just one player. It was pretty much the entire, the entire offensive, offensive line. Yeah, they all jumped. Handoff again. Stutter step right side. Brought down for Sexton, the ball carrier. He was just maybe a yard on that carrier. The clock continues to wind down. Yeah. Nix is out, Leonard's in. Second down and nine, Daggett over center. Hand off again, and that's good. That's not going maybe for a couple of yards. Almost the entire line of the of the Bruins in on that tackle. Machado, the ball carrier. Rippon still doesn't have a run longer than eight yards in this half. They haven't had a run longer than that since the first quarter. Wow. Even so, then, they only had the one. They're approaching the two minute mark too. Yeah, 213 and counting. They're wasting a lot of time out there. And it's a sweep to Davis. And they got him for a loss on the play. 
And he's, uh, he took a nosedive right into the dirt. He's slow getting up. So the ball's on the 36. Clock continues to run with 138, third down and long, about nine yards. Bear River fans on the left on side. Yeah, the Bear River fans on their feet. They got the receivers out here. Let's see what they're gonna do. Looking long, gonna go deep. Bear River's right there, and it's it's gonna be incomplete. Well, that'll bring up turnover on downs with 116 left. That could just just about do it, do you think? All Bear River needs is the first down. Rippon still has all three of their timeouts. I think they got two left. Did they call? They called one a little earlier. So. All right. Well, Bear River can still get the clock under, say, 30 seconds. seconds yeah. But they've right now. There's only been one breakout play, and Rippon was the one who had it. They're going to have to hold on to the ball if Bruins want to go on to the dance next week. I'm a little surprised. They went with uh, Michael Winters as the intended receiver instead of Dorian Doherty. Handoff. That looks like Bays powering his way up the middle. Well, we got to get a player of the game award tonight, no, oh, Steve. We oh, haven't Austin thought about it. Yeah, I think. Austin is probably going to get the award tonight as uh, he's put on defense, offense, scored that touchdown. It's been a, you got to really got to give it all around to the defense, but I mean, the, the defensive line has made a very good case for themselves. I, 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 in my mind, the, the deep, it's either the defensive line or Austin Bays, but. Austin Bays has been fantastic on both sides of the field. Steve Sitter, Marty Mortensen, and our excellent camera operator tonight, Michael West, as the Bruins will have it second and short, and there's going to be a flag call. That'll stop the clock with the 103 left to go in this ball game. False start by the Bruins. There were just three penalties called the entire first half. In the second half, there have been eight. Yeah, it's been a uh, hard-fought game all the way around. Please reset the clock to one minute and five seconds. 105 left in this ball game. I think the uh, Rippins got one more timeout left. They do. They're, they're still mathematically in the game, assuming they can stop Bear River here, but, yeah. second and 11. They got a tight formation, handoff to, that is a handoff to, uh, looks like Carpenter. Another, another timeout call. Yep. That was Carpenter, the ball carrier, holding on to the ball. So they're the last time out with 59 seconds. Well, you, you're, you must be a great mathematician. You said probably with 33 seconds left, and now they're out of timeouts. Bear River with the ball. And they've got third and nine. And it's, th this hasn't been a big play type no. of game. Well, with the timeout on the field, that Steve and I both agree that our player of the, player of the game award on the Bill Slade and Sons player of the game award tonight, we're going to give it to senior Austin Bays for his touchdown on that uh, on the first score for the Bruins his fumble recovery of the lateral and also his great play on the uh, defense tonight you agree Steve? oh 100% okay so there's our Bill Slade player of the, of the game award goes to Austin Bays so now it's last time out for the Indians one minute left to go and Tight formation for the Bruins again. This is bag it over center. This is a knee formation. And they got him on an offside. Oh. That'll give him five yards, but they will have the clock to run. I'm not 
really sure what the thinking is on the defensive line there. That was not a play formation. That was a kneel down formation. So it's third down and about five. Let's see if, if let's see if they can with one minute left. If they get a first down, you called it. That's uh, that's the ball game. And third and five is much more makeable. But there's another very tight there's a hand off the base. He's on them. He's still going, but he's going to be short of the first down. Can't stop the clock. With I would uh, I would run it one more time. Don't you think? Well, if. If you do and you don't make it, the clock will stop on a turnover. Yeah, right. At the very least, if you punt it, the clock runs while the ball's in the air. Well, they may let the clock run all the way down and then kick it. That would be my, that would be my play at this point in time. Well, another five yards. Yeah, what's really is not making a difference. Isn't huge. I mean, certainly, it's worth trying to time it, but with the great with the great foot that you have for uh, Alex Bond. Uh, it's five yards is fine. Yeah. And Bariver apparently had one left, one timeout left. <laughs> well, Bear River called that timeout. I thought. I, I thought, thought they, they were, were out. out. Yeah. That's what I did too. So now. Bond back in punt formation. A good snap and a good kick with 15 seconds left to go in the game. And back to receive as winners. Just keep the kick between the lines. Now you yeah. can kick it right down the middle. You're going to kick. They, they wanted him to have an out of bounds kick, but that wasn't what you wanted to do. And they're that, gonna, that essentially was a net kick of four, four yards. yards. Oh, boy. That is that'd get a they didn't want to run back, but you got to kick it down inside the 25. I can understand the rationale of not wanting a run back, but at the very least, if you kick it high, force yeah. a fair catch, that runs off way more time than just kicking it out of bounds does. Well, now you've given Rippin great field position, exactly. too. Exactly. Now they can go for a pass into the end zone with, with uh, 10 seconds left. They're going to do a... Another pass, and they're, they're going to sack him. He got Clock, out of bounds. And it's out of bounds. There's three seconds left. Derek Roy was uh, took that lateral and is going to pass it downfield. I think he was intending to pass it to number one, Doherty, who made that 60-yard touchdown catch. Well, he managed to get back yeah. to the line of scrimmage somehow. I guess that's probably the perfect spot for a trick play. <laughs> yeah. There's really no harm well, done. This is, look at that Bear Rivers in prevent defense. Sometimes that prevents you from winning, but let's see what happens. Only rushing going three. Going back. And they're going to, and they hit him just as he throws, going up for it and knocked down as the clock ticks out. Bear Rivers going to the dance. Bear River wins. There's a flag down. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Well, I might have called that a little too early. I didn't see that flag. That is an interesting placement of the flag, too. Where was it? It's about 15 yards downfield. Oh, really? Well, if it's this against might the, be holding. If it's against the defense, then they get one more play. I think, given the spot of that flag, I think it's holding on Bear River. I really don't know what else it could be. Hands to the face, maybe, but it's, it would amount to the same thing. Well, the fans uh, think the game is over as they start heading for the exit. Yep, holding. <laughs> so it's ten. So then now, then now they've got a, they've got a, they got one more play. One untimed play. And they're ten yards closer. Yeah. And if you saw where that pass was, that pass landed at about the five yard line. Right, so that right. extra ten yards puts the end zone in Ryan Daggett's range. So let's see. Are they only going to rush three again? Oh, the fans are on their feet. Last play. High snap. Looking, looking, looking. Big rush. They're going to throw it. It slipped out of his hand. 
and it's knocked down. Now the Bear River will be going for the dance as the Bruins win 14 to 7. Wow, what an exciting game tonight. And for the third time in four years, the Bear River Bulls. Well, the Bears second half was a lot more exciting than the first. It certainly <laughs> was. Why don't you uh, why don't you recap it for us here, uh, Steve? As uh, if you've got to check your notes in this wet wet weather. Well, the first mm -hmm. half was all defense, certainly. The second half, not only was there excellent defensive play, but suddenly some holes started opening up. Uh, you can tell that there was a lot of fatigue, uh, both on offense and defense, for both of these teams. This is very tough conditions, very tough. It takes a lot out of you just trying to keep your footing on the field, whether you're going up to block a pass or whether you're trying to make a cutback move, trying to go through a hole. Uh, as a running back, but either way, some holes started opening up in the second half, allowing some bigger plays uh, to be made, most notably that 60-yard pass to Dorian Doherty, the only touchdown, the only points of the night for Rippin. Just an excellent game uh, from a defensive standpoint for everyone. Bear River's real, really only real mistake, uh, minus the late game penalties, although both teams are really guilty of that, was that 60-yard pass. Other than that, just looking at the, the single-digit gains for all of these plays from Rippin, because Rippin really uh, dictated the pace of that second half. They had the ball for far longer than Bear River did, and Bear River's defense continued to stop them, continued to force turnovers. And I think if you're Rippin, you're looking at this going, okay, one interception, two fumbles, one turnover on possessions. This game was in our reach all night and we just could not get it done. Bear River, to their credit, they got it done when Rippin made those mistakes. Well, their final score, they've turned the clock off already. Good thing I wrote it down, 14 to seven, not much of a score compared to what we had predicted. What a great birthday present for Terry Logue. His birthday was yesterday. I talked to Terry Logue, the coach tonight, and I said, uh, I said, happy birthday again and it'd be a great birthday present if you could get a victory tonight to go to the dance next week for the championship and uh, like you did two years ago. And he said, boy, that would be a very good and happy <laughs> birthday present. So with the team on the field as the uh, uh, Mike, Michael West uh, zooms in on the, the Bear River uh, chalk talk down there, and once again, we'll announce that the, the uh, Bear River Player of the game tonight, the Bill Slayton Sons. Player of the game, number 29, Austin Bays. And uh, a fine effort by the entire defense tonight. An excellent program from Rippon. They, uh, uh, they had some good chances, and I think the defense just rose to the occasion for the Bruins, a, a couple of turnovers. But you got to hand it to the Indians, Steve. They stopped Bear River three times inside the 20 yard line, on the 25 yard line. No, Rippon came yeah. to play, absolutely. And, no question and, and, about and it. And like I said, this game was within their reach up until that final play. Yep. They were right there. They were right there. Just the turnovers, and they, they couldn't get more than the one big play. All right, well, I think uh, we just about, I'm almost out of voice here, and uh, <laughs> Steve, it was great to have you back in, in, uh, back in the saddle here again. A great job, as always. And uh, Michael West, thank you very much for coming out in this cold night and shooting this game. And for Gil Dominguez and Touchdown Productions, along with Steve Sitter, Marty Mortensen, and camera operator Michael West, big victory by the Bruins tonight, 14 to seven. They're going next week to the championship game, whether against Sonora or Colfax. And Sonora was leading the last we heard. Just by three. By three in the fourth quarter. So it's going to be an exciting game next week. Once again, the Bruins will be uh, practicing on Thanksgiving, and uh, they'll look forward to that. And you got to hand it to the boys. They uh, played a whale of a game tonight, good coaching. And for all of us here on Touchdown Productions, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next week at the championship. Good night, everybody.